Hey, we have Spirit Island, a game by R. Eric Roos. Previously on Jerry Scarborough for Gaming Geek Things, we did Sakaro Heroes, which is a interesting dice chucker game. Today we have this game I got from Target, probably sometime around the same time I got Sakari Heroes, like months and months back when Target was having like some kind of special clearance sale on some games or whatever. Anyway, this is Horizons of the Spirit Island. Just Horizons of Spirit Island. A cooperative settler destruction strategy games. Settler destruction! Instead of you trying to settler settle, you're trying to destroy the settlers. Evil settlers. Your island has been invaded. I mean, you're home for more sunrises than the oldest of you can count. As spirits, woo, you are an essential part of the natural world, but something beyond nature as well. Native islanders, known as the Dahan, have learned how to coexist with the spirits. Woo! But with a healthy dose of caution and respect, your existence has been for the most part peaceful. Now your island has been discovered by invaders from outer space. No, invaders from another coin from a far off land. These would be colonist colonizers and send their explorers across the island, taking over the land and upsettling the natural balance, destroying the presence of spirits as they go. Your home is being blighted by their actions as spirits. Woo! You must power, grow in power, draw energy from the natural world, and work together to drive the one islanders, invaders, colonizers from your island. Defend your home in Horizons of Spirit Island. So, just from the back of the description, I understand why Target had the game. And I also wonder why, uh, I also know why Target had the game. And I also know why the game got, um, clearanced. Because it's a woke game. You can clearly tell it's a woke game. It's basically claiming that the spirits or the ancestors of, like, the African tribes or whatever are being invaded by, clearly they are being invaded by the white colonizers. Anyway, it comes with a quick start guide. Check out these 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 spirits. You got like a dinosaur creature, another dinosaur creature, like these weird bat looking creatures. You got this like giant jaguar bigfoot type creature. You got this other cat creature and stuff. Welcome to Horizons of Spirit Island! So here's a three player board. Spirit selection. Invader cards. First round in detail. First power phase. I do like that it has this um quick guide book thing. And it's got some good art, so I'm not gonna di I'm I'm going to diss that the game is clearly one of them woke games. But I'm not gonna diss that the artwork is good because artists tend to be more on the left side. I don't know if it's because of the left brain, right brain chemical reaction thing, but uh artists do tend to be more left leaning. Uh Politically, in general, but I like art, and I'm more of a right-leaning person. But I'm not an artist, so anybody can appreciate art, regardless of your political um, persuasion.
So I guess in this game you're playing both the invaders and the spirits, maybe. Or maybe the game plays the invaders by themselves. I'm not sure. Um, golly! 20-something pages? Shh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they aren't very much rules. I mean, that you read, but jeez. So, here's some of the lore about it. So, they had to... They, they did more work on the actual... They did more work on the actual rules than the lore. So you would think they would do some work on the lore. Look at... And then here's the references. They had playtesters, artists, credits. Well, they gave credit where it's due. They gave it to the playtesters, the credits, and the various different artists. So that's nice. Let's just read some of the lore and see how woke the game is. The Island. The island has existed for longer than humans have lived there. But despite the continued existence of first-hand white witnesses, assembling a coherent history is virtually impossible. Even among the most trustworthy spirits, tales of the past are rife with contradictions all maintained to be true. So basically, that's wokeism right there. Um where everybody's truth is their own truth. What you believe is true is true. There are multiple gods, multiple spirits. Each truth is your truth, and each truth is your is its own path to nirvana or to heaven or whatever. Again, Let's read about the spirits. The spirits of the island are many and diverse. Tronging wisps of breeze, strange half-seen shadows across still water, the sunbeam which forms perfect patterns even through tangled deadwood. Most do not fight the invaders. The smaller spirits are too weak. The greatest ones too slow or so strong they'll destroy the island. Okay, so the spirits are basically going back to the pagan idea that everything had a spirit. Everything was in itself an old god. This the, the blank this blanket has a spirit. The the box of this board game has a spirit. This paper has a spirit. Um everything has a spirit. And everything spirit is in itself its own god. Wind, there, there's a spirits of there's spirits of the wind, there's spirits of the wood, there's spirits of the trees, there's spirits of the uh, of the animals, there's spirits of everything. That's an old pagan idea, and thus everything needs to be worshipped and appreciated. That's a wokest, leftist, nature loving, environmentalist. Um, concept here. Then we have the Dahan. You can clearly see that the Dahan look like Native Americans. I was going to go with blacks in Africa, but now I'm seeing a picture and we're clearly going with Native Americans. So it's basically America getting colonized. The invaders are basically going to be Americans, white folks, and we went against the Native American tribes who are supposedly in this game peaceful, but no one's ever heard that the Native Americans fought each other and killed themselves, which was historically accurate. Anyway, the Dahlin were the first humans on the island. They immigrated many centuries ago, and while they expected their new home to have spirits, they were greatly surprised by the spirit's numbers. Vitality and intensity of manifestation. Early relations between Dahan and spirits were fraught, but over a great deal of time and no small number of tribulations, they have learned to coexist as neighbors and, for the most part, allies. The Dahan no longer view the spirits as gods, and the spirits have a better understanding of the Dahan. Okay, so... 
This is more like tribal ancestral worship type deal here. They no longer believe the spirits are gods, so they no longer worship them. But they still respect them and need their help and guidance and all that. Uh, so, yeah. It, it's uh, Native... They're basically Native Americans of a type. But they're peaceful Native Americans. More of a pacifistic Native Americans that believe in nature and that kind of stuff. Let's read about the invaders. We can clearly see that, of course, they have the invaders as white people. They look like um, Spaniards. Clearly, they look like Spaniards. You know, from Spain, Marco Polo, um, Aztec Incans, Mayans, all took out by Spanish conquistadors. Okay? So, white folks. European, European, white people. The invaders found the island a decade ago. Early coastal, coastal contact, coast, coastal contact with the Dahan was fairly peaceful. The Dahan saw these new seafarers as analogs of their those who travel and offered them appropriate hospitality. So we're going with the same basic Thanksgiving Day type myth here that the Native Americans came to the first colonies people and um, actually helped them out. Which is a myth. That's not exactly what happened historically. The invaders saw a fertile, sprucely populated island and brought word home of a land ripe for the taking. They come, they make peace, and then they tell the homeland people, Oh, come on! Over here! There's room! And we can take over! Yeah, that's also not exactly what happened historically with America either. The first col colony ships arrived five years later, bringing both settlers and an onslaught of foreign diseases. Again, they're going with the idea that we as Americans brought diseases intentionally on purpose to the Native Americans. How were we to know that? We were not. which tore through the Dahan. Spirit, spirit assistants helped many Dahan survive, but even so, as the game opens, they are just regaining their footing, mourning their dead and discovering that these scourges were not the act of angry spirits. They are divided on what to do. Some see the invaders as a menace to drive away, while others still think of them as our new neighbors, or are fascinated with their lifestyle tools and beliefs. So... They're going with the majority believing that we should make peace with these new white people and we're nice Native Americans over the majority of them going with let's kick their butt and fight. The larger spirits of the islands live and act on much longer time scales than humans. The most common reaction to the invaders' arrival was, oh great, more humans. Here we go again. Tempered with some optimism that spirit seekers of the Dahan could act as intermediaries to avoid another confrontation. So, the spirits are supposedly also very peaceful here. They're not evil spirits. They don't want to fight. They just don't really care for more additional humans, which is kind of racist on their part, by the way. But the invaders refused to listen and spread impossibly quickly with more and more colony ships arriving each year. In the blink of an eye, there were nearly as many invaders as the Han, methodically reshaping the land, destroying spirit and the Han alike in their heedless, swarming expansion. So... 
they're basically saying that when they destroyed nature to build civilization as the colonizers do they um destroyed the spirits too So the spirits are attached to nature itself. Anyway, so now you play as one of these spirits or crypto cryptids of some sort, and you're just basically supposed to drive out the colony, not the colonizers. Yeah, very woke game. Very woke, progressive ideas, Native Americans being, and fitting all the, all the hoaxes of, all the, um, the historical revision, re, revisionist histories of all that. Anyway, here's the different characters. We have a devouring teeth lurk underfoot. So it's a giant worm creature kind of like the sandworms from dune yeah uh, long ago the being which would become the devouring teeth lurked underfoot was a small territorial spirit of the sand by water it waited patiently for a small prey to approach then frightened them towards its wa waiting maw when fresh prey was scarce it would scavenge most such spirits still ti stay tiny, but this one happened to take a bite out of ember-eyed behemoth. It slowly grew larger and more mobile, shittering, slittering below the land surface in a way impossible for normal animals. It has learned to avoid conflict with the Dahan, who grew wise it to its ways long ago and has ever formed a peace of sorts with them. The invaders do not have that benefit. Okay, so it's a giant snake worm creature that eats people. And other animals. Next up we have eye watching from the trees. Eyes watching from the trees. Even after centuries, the hand find many things about eyes watch from the trees somewhat enigmatic. It is a spirit of the trees themselves, or a spirit which inhabits trees as at home. Is it one spirit or many, or a sort of collective spirit? Despite these uncertainties, most of Han trust the spirit. It warns of danger, helps those lost or injured in the forest, and only works mischief or aggression against the arrogant. Back in the days of the First Reckoning, its faint whispers were a source of dread, but to the current generations, they're a familiar and expected part of the island. Okay. Then there's the fathom fathomless mud of the swamp. Fathomless mud of the swamp it looks like a swamp, and so it's it's basically a a swamp thing type creature, a mud type creature, a um, Sasquatchish type creature. It says the island has many swampy de deltas along its coast. Some are fairly navigable, while others are mazes of murky water, tangled trees, and land that isn't nearly so solid as it appears. Fathomless mud of the swamp is one of these latter s sorts, with a part pinchment for spreading. It likes getting everywhere, slowly turning solid ground into muck and mire. Some Dahan villages have struck struck fruitful bargains with it, easy passage and useful plants in exchange for tasks more easily done by human hands. Most, however, will move on to new living grounds years earlier should they notice the southern signs of it moving into their area. So that spirit's just trying to take over. Rising heat of stone and sand. It looks like a Basically, it's a dragon of some sorts. The Hun invaders, I mean herders, are very familiar with rising heat of stone and sand. The signs of its presence and passed down from generation to generation so it can acknowledge and thank for safe passage across its scorching domain. Even after centuries, the spirit remains a bit under and unclear on the way... Why living things get so unhappy about fatal 
desecration. But the Dahan makes such pleasant patterns across its sands that it's happy to forbear. It is mostly found in sandy and rocky lands with spruce vegetation, but may also reside in volcanic areas or even stretches of gravel or sand amidst wetter climates, radiating on intense and unusual heat all around. Then, of course, there's the sun bright whirlwind, which is basically a jaguar, cat, cheetah creature thing. Sun bright whirlwind is a spirit of sun warmed and gusting air. It spins leaves and dust into miniature cyclones, playfully scratches at small, unsecured objects, and sometimes, when joyful or upset or full of vigor of nature, howls across the island, bending, bend, bending trees and arboring the landscape with pebbles, twigs, shells, and occasional bird nests. Some Dahan take its appearance as a good sign for travel, and others have tried asking it to help bring messages to those far away with mixed success, as it tends to lightly prank the recipients by mixing the messages words all about. So, yeah, it is a cat. All right. Mm, there we go. So it looks like we have invader towels, little house towels, chips, little hut towels, uh, various different, I guess, spirit tokens, and we have multiples of these, and then we have the different colors, um, uh, nice enough to give us a bunch of extra bags, so we can put these different kinds into different bags, silica joil, that's really great stuff to have, and then these little tokens, there's, uh, cards here, various different cards so we will look at the cards in a minute i'm not really going to punch these out not at this time but um we have it appears to be a double-sided board so here is one side board my bad it's upside down <clears throat> so it's smaller I guess this is this looks like the smaller board. We have coasts that the, it looks like people can't get to because of their rocky coast, and then we have coasts on the other side. Um, this is a the blight pool. You got fear pool, terror level, fear deck, earn fear cards, fear discard, and then the regular explore build, ravage, and discard pals for that. And then here's the bigger island. So you have a smaller island and a bigger island. And then you have certain areas that are, looks like they're, you have basically kind of a stitch work pattern for each property, for area. And then you have, not sure what this supposed to be but maybe it's because it's three separate regions or whatever same fear pool blight pool etc so now we know what these cards are some of them are fear cards and different kinds um, you have these which basically are they all have ships on them the back and they're basic directionals like They all have letters on them, which I guess probably correspond to the different locations on the board. Um, going to get some comment from some fiati somewhere about how they didn't want me to talk about wokeism I guarantee you um, here's some power progression cards for each one of the uh, spirits so these are um, like uh, player aid cards I guess and then here's minor player cards
So these are um, different other spirits. Then you have, looks like each spirit has their own little small deck of cards. Then we have these two cards, which Terra Level 2 and Terra Level 3. So I guess that's um, some other stuff that Dane comes with. Maybe there's different threat levels that you can play. Wow, this video is going to be a long video. Already at 27 minutes. Highly doubt you are gone this far. Y'all probably got quit going after I started talking about wokeism and whatnot. So here's a, a fear deck. Here's some more minor player cards, minor power cards. And here's some major power cards. So, uh, that's the game, that's everything that's in the game, remember God is good, and the only spirit you need is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, all the time, God is good, keep on gaming, like, comment, subscribe, share. Comment down below your favorite spirit. And uh, mine's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And that's the only spirit I need to fear. And have holy reverential fear for him. Um, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of God. The King of Kings, Lord of Lords. The Helper. The Helper. Spirit. Jesus loves you, Jesus God, Jesus Lord, Jesus King, Jesus is the ruler of everything. Like, comment, subscribe, share. And, uh, I don't know, comment down below what you think about this game. Because it's clearly based off of a woke premise. I mean, it's clearly woke. It's, cl it's clearly. Clearly based off of woke premise. That Native Americans were peaceful and nice and ingenious and made their peace with with the nature and went with the land. And then the Europeans came over here and colonized and took over and destroyed their culture and everything and also destroyed their way of life and destroyed their spirits and all that freaking garbage which isn't exactly the case 
that's the woke leftist uh, revisionist history garbage that they sprout out. They forget the fact that the Spanish conquistadors went and conquered the Aztec Incans and Mayans. The Aztec Incans and Mayans were all three in themselves con warrior nations that conquered people. How did they become so big and powerful? Because they were warrior nations that conquered people. <sighs> they defeated and conquered and created their own things. You, you leave out the fact that different Native American tribes didn't like other Native American tribes and had wars between each other. If anything, when we pushed them all together, we made them unite to fight us, basically. And that didn't happen until the West, when, again, people were trying to move and settle. Also, Native Americans are terrible negotiators. All you had to do was get them drunk with some fire water and they signed whatever you wanted them to sign. Manhattan was the first major purchase, which has some um, of the most expensive piece of property real estate in the freaking country, possibly the world. And it was bought with like 30 gallons of 